want to start with uh, a woman I interviewed yesterday. She was telling me about her daughter, and her daughter is in her 20s and uh, was just given a diagnosis of schizophrenia. And uh, her daughter was told that she should mourn her old self, that she would never be that self again, and that she should learn to live with her illness. And I just, I got so furious when I heard that, um, and because hope is so central to recovery. And that was the story, you know, all throughout, that you know, every time I was put on a new drug and I had you know, some kind of adverse reaction to the drug, it was like, oh, her, her condition is worsening. So that pretty much sent me on a spiral from age 13 to pretty much uh, my adulthood where I was in and out of institutions. I uh, tried to take my life a number of times. I was diagnosed with depression, borderline personality disorder, uh, bipolar, um, I forget the exact term, but bipolar tendencies, I guess is what they used. Um, it just, you know, o OCD at one point. Um, and all the while, you know, the medications were really making me sick. I think being a younger person, living in a very specific white suburb and not knowing that I was going to fit into the norm, gender and sexual, sexually, that's, that's a traumatic thing to go through. Um, and that really wasn't really weighed so much in terms of therapists and psychiatrists. Um, it was more like, we understand what you're saying because it fits this illness model. And I just realized watching them, watching them ask me these questions that were out of a book and not really asking me questions about who I was, that it really didn't have a lot of meaning, that it didn't have to be who I was. And that point for me was a turning point to saying that I'm not going to be looking to the system for answers anymore. A lot of these altered states are, are growing up. We have all this fear and I think that fear just makes it worse. And I know in my case it did. It made the, the fear around me probably led to the point where it got to a car accident and a, you know, almost a near-death experience. And um, I could have potentially hurt other people you know, when I was driving my car in an altered state, which luckily I didn't. But um, I just think it's really common for that to happen. And a lot more common than people realize. I thought that there was something wrong with me for having those experiences. I thought it was my fault that I had those experiences and I thought um, that they were supposed to be kept secret. I didn't start healing until somebody said, oh my God, what happened to you? You know, that was always avoided. What I've heard repeatedly is that people need to be listened to. People need to interact. People need to feel respected. People need to feel cared about. People need safe places to go. They need to feel that they're valued. And so if we're going to talk about psychiatric diagnosis, I personally never figured out how psychiatric diagnosis fits into that. There is a necessity for dealing with outliers, outsiders, people who are different, who don't go along with the social program that they have been indoctrinated into. I was not going along with that program and I was perceived as someone who was, a, who, who was in fact a troublemaker and they didn't want to see me that way. They wanted to see me as a backward individual who had some kind of brain disease that I was suffering from and their treatments by damaging the brain uh, were, was going to, were going to correct the problem. Well, they didn't, they didn't correct the problem at all and there was no problem to begin with. There was just a person who was striking out on his own on a different course. And that's the way society dealt with people then and still deals with people. And it's a totally subjective thing, this idea of madness and mental illness. There's no scientific basis for it, whatever. You know, I, was, I could cry right now. I was told for so much of my life that my brain was broken and it was incurable. Imagine being told that at 16 and 17 and 18. I felt like a pariah. I felt like I would never be normal. I was told I would never recover. I would never have a life in the community. It was devastating. It was devastating to me. And 
obviously you can see I still have very strong feelings about it. I mean, so many people continue to be told this. And we have to stop it. We have to stop it. We have to give people hope. And the American public has been lied to, and we have to stop it.